Good morning, everybody. Just to uh, tell you a little bit about how this will work this morning. But before that, for those of you with us this weekend, I uh, just want to say thank you and that um, some COVID protocols, we would ask that everybody before you come on the day, visit the Nova Scotia uh, Health Authority website and just go through the uh, COVID health checklist. Uh, we're asking all staff and, and, and Western staff at the hotel to do this this year and we appreciate your cooperation with that. For this press conference, uh, in a moment, uh, Halifax International Security Forum President Peter Van Prague will come out, deliver some opening remarks. We'll open it up for questions. We're going to use the standing mics here. We have two of them. Uh, and if you could just keep your masks on until you get to the mic, uh, when it's your turn to speak, you take your mask off to speak, ask your question. We'll go with one and a follow-up. And then when you're not speaking, if you can kindly keep your mask on, um, we're just um, keeping that pretty, pretty tight this weekend. Uh, and we'll go another round if we have time. Thanks very much. We'll be out in a moment. Good morning. Hi, everybody. My name is Peter Van Prague. I'm president of Halifax International Security Forum. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Before I go too much further, I do want to wish our managing director, Laura Bridge, a happy birthday. I'm not sure if she's here, if she's watching this, but she has celebrated her birthday here at Halifax International Security Forum for the past 13 years. So. Um, <coughs> participants from around the world um, have traveled here during a pandemic and entrusted us with their personal well-being. The local community has entrusted us with its well-being. We don't take that responsibility lightly and I want to tell you a little bit about the safety protocols that are in place. Everyone here, including yourselves, all of our participants, staff, volunteers, servers, are fully vaccinated. Fresh air is being pumped into this, into the plenary hall all day. The, the program is designed for giving as much space as needed and all of our participants must wear masks at all times except when they're eating, drinking, or speaking on stage. We're asking people just to be mindful and to keep their social distance. This weekend, I am going to be introducing to the Halifax International Community, Canada's new Minister of National Defense, Anita Anand. Anita Anand was re-elected in September and appointed Canada's Minister of National Defense three weeks ago. Before entering politics in the 2019 election, Minister Anand was a law professor at the University of Toronto, where she held the J.R. Kimber Chair in Investor Protection and Corporate Governance. She's the author of a number of books on corporate law. She's taught at Yale, Queens, and Western. She represents Oats, Oak, <coughs> not Oatsville, she represents Oakville. And she was born and raised in Nova Scotia. Between 2019 and 2021, she was Minister of Public Services and Procurement of Canada. What does this mean? It means that A, she has experience in procurement, and B, during the pandemic, Minister Anon was responsible for successfully procuring life-saving vaccines against the coronavirus for 38 million Canadians. She is personally responsible for saving thousands of lives. Saving lives, procurement, Minister Anand is very well prepared for her new assignment as Canada's Minister of National Defence and we're very much looking forward to having her with us at Halifax this weekend. I'm happy to take questions and talk to you about anything that you want to talk about, including the agenda, including our participants, including the beautiful and welcoming weather here in Halifax. And just a reminder, if we could use the stand-up microphones, and if I'd just ask you to give your name and outlet before asking your question. Please. Oh, no. Well, we're going to use the microphone, so okay. Rob, I'll let you have pass one time. 
Age before beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Peter. Uh, Rob from AP. Uh, obviously, China will be a big focus this weekend. Uh, you, I'm sure you've seen what's happening with this tennis player that's been disappeared. Uh, should athletes, should countries ban or, or, or boycott their athletes going to the Olympic Games? Thanks, Rob. It's great to see you. Welcome back. Delighted you're here. Um, you know, first of all, my personal view, um, and we are, uh, you're right, we're going to talk a lot about China. China's on the agenda. It's been on the agenda for a few years now. Now um, it's urgent. Um, everything that we have um, hinted at, uh, predicted, it's all coming true. China is regressing politically. It's a dangerous place. Um, it seems to me that the spirit of the Olympic Games is about humanity and coming together with certain shared values. China, People's Republic of China, its government does not share those values. Um, every country has to decide on its own what to do. Um, for our part, um, we've announced this in the past, but I'm going to say it again this weekend. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we are launching our very first international event outside of Canada next spring. HFX Taiwan is going to bring leaders, democratic leaders, legislators, um, human rights activists, uh, personalities to Taiwan. Why? We are going to be doing that exactly to shed a light uh, on Taiwan's uh, successes, its democratic su successes, but also shed a light on what is going on inside China as well. I think that everybody needs to make decisions about their athletes, about everything else, um, fully aware uh, and under no, you know, no, no surprise that what's going on in China isn't actually what's going on. It's going on. There's genocide going on in Western China. Uh, the leader of China um, has uh, manipulated the system to stay in power for as long as he can. Um, history uh, shows what happens next, and we all have to be prepared. Heidi, next question. Thank you. Heidi Petrachik with CTV Atlantic here. Hi, Heidi. Uh, hello. What are the logistical issues you've had to deal with with bringing in people from around the world when it comes to COVID-19 and protocols? I'm talking about, you know, take-home testing, um, you know, making sure everybody is double-vaxxed. What has that been like to try to organize that on top of the usual task of organizing this forum? Yeah, Heidi, um, that's a really important question, and it's important to my team because essentially... Uh, you know, we, we have a very small team who puts this on, and to do this this year essentially has been twice the logistical work. Um, it's not only bringing people from around the world, but it's bringing people here safely. Um, so yes, so um, number one, Canada and Nova Scotia, and I, I do want to congratulate Nova Scotia, you've done an amazing job, um, have their own requirements. And so we have to, although this might sound simple, we have to make sure that all of our participants are aware of those requirements. And yes, we've had participants show up at airports without the right vaccine and without the right um, testing. Um, so that's number one, just a flow of information, making sure people are aware of it. Um, uh, our headquarters is in Washington, DC. We turned our headquarters this past week into a COVID testing site uh, where all of our American participants were tested. And I'm uh, very happy to report this morning that we had zero cases of, of, uh, of any positive results. Um, uh, and then, you know, when people arrive here, uh, they're getting a packet actually before they arrive with, with all of the, the rules for uh, Halifax, for Nova Scotia, for Canada, and then the Halifax International Security Forum rules, which are, in fact, enhanced further to keep people safe. So thank you. Just to follow up, uh, what did you do in the cases where people arrived at the Stanfield International Airport and didn't have uh, the necessary, as you mentioned, vaccines or requirements? <coughs> they didn't arrive. They, 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 uh, they stayed. They were held back. There was a couple of instances. Uh, they had to get new plane tickets and then go get vaccine, uh, go get uh, tested, come back to the airport. Um, so that is going on as we speak. Um, and, you know, you will see, and I, I do 
ask for everybody's patience because we are seeing uh, today that there are, you know, the best made plans uh, sometimes go away. So we, so there are speakers who are having trouble uh, getting here. And, uh, you know, I do think that there's an increased level of understanding. This is an in-person event. There is no virtual component to it. Uh, we think that that is very, very important um, to bring people together, that there is, you know, as good as virtual is, there's really no substitute for this. Um, and, but with that, um, there's going to be a few surprises. Can I have the follow -up, a follow-up to the follow-up? <laughs> How many people would be affected by that, uh, and, and, and what countries would be examples of where they were coming from? And I take it you mean they didn't depart their home country. Yeah. That's I mean, like three follow-ups. Uh, Sorry about that, but no, that's okay. I mean, no, we. I mean, like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna generalize or name names, but you know, this is everything from uh, participants who are flying in, journalists, participants, right up to ministers. I mean, I gotta be honest with you, uh, who simply, you know, Canada has a has a vac has a vaccine requirement with uh, Canada-approved vaccines, and not every country in the world has a Canada-approved vaccine, and it is paramount to Canada, and it's paramount to us that uh, all these. Uh, protocols are followed and everybody stays safe. So, Mary? Hi, Peter. Murray Brewster with CBC. Hey, Murray, how are you? Good. Good to see your face. Uh, good, good to have my face in the same <laughs> way. Uh, there have been a number of uh, fast moving developments this week as it relates to Ukraine and Russia and the Russian troops on the border. Yeah. How much of the discussion this weekend is going to be focused on that? So, Murray, it's great to see you. Welcome back. Um, you know, the, the agenda itself is always, you know, we do pride ourselves on making the agenda relevant uh, and having bandwidth in it for, for uh, events that happen maybe actually just in the space of before print, I mean, but from the time of print to the time we sit down. So we have uh, leaders from Ukraine coming, both from the defense ministry and the president's office, and we're going to be uh, having what's called a chat with them uh, to talk about this. The issue that it set, it sets the forum, um, um, I will tell you, uh, we had the Polish chief of defense staff. Uh, I mean, this is not exactly related, but, you know, events happen. The Polish chief of defense staff is scheduled. I think he might be in the printed agenda, um, but because of the issues on the Poland Belarus border uh, had to stay back in in Warsaw, um, but the issue related to Ukraine and Russia is not new. I mean, the, there's a new developments, but the issue itself is not new. And we've been we've been tracking and working with the Ukrainians for many many years. Uh, Poroshenko is here as well, uh, the president, the former president of Ukraine, who certainly is going to be talking about this. Um, my own personal view is. Um, we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, is a dangerous man, and um, and we need to be prepared for what's going on in uh, Ukraine's border. Well, just as follow-up, and with all due respect, there have been few times when there have been upwards of 100,000 troops, Russian troops, on yeah. the border with Ukraine. Do you and does the, some, uh, the forum not see this as a... Um, a pressing matter, a crisis? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, clearly it's a pressing matter. Uh, clearly, I mean, you know, as you've been following, uh, the United States government has sent messages, uh, NATO has sent messages, um, and like I said, the, the Ukrainians are, are here uh, to ensure that the people in the room are understanding what's happening on the border. Um, we, I mean, Murray, as, as uh, this is a converse, th these places, this meeting um, is about looking back and looking forward in a holistic way. Uh, it's not a crisis center. Uh, the crisis centers happen in ministries of defense, in foreign ministries, and in, ex in, you know, in Prime Minister and President's office, uh, which, is, which is why the fo some of the folks who are actually in the middle of this exact crisis that you're talking about are staying back in their capitals. Just one follow-up. Sure. It's not uh, related. Um, there have been stories in the past about uh, whether or not uh, the summit would be going forward, uh, or excuse me, the forum would be going forward in previous years. Um, do you find with the changing of the guard at National Defense 
that there is going to be more um, stability for the Halifax Security Forum going forward? <coughs> Murray, I really appreciate the question. Uh, stability is a great word. It's something that we're looking for at the forum and something we're looking for on the Ukrainian-Russian border. Um, uh, um, I do believe that this meeting, this annual meeting that brings people from, not just people, leaders from, uh, you know, upwards of 80 democratic countries um, has, be has become appreciated not only by the participants who come, but by uh, the powers that be uh, in the federal government. Um, you know, we're an independent organization, so we are going to write an agenda that we think is most appropriate. Uh, we cooperate with the government of Canada, but it's never going to be exactly aligned. Um, but despite that, um, I'm quite confident that the, that the, uh, the uh, Department of National Defense understands uh, the value of, uh, of people coming together in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada every year. And I'm pretty um, optimistic that, you know, um, sadly, as the, some of the issues you mentioned, um, there's going to be a need for this type of gathering, for this specific gathering, uh, for a while. I don't mean to mon uh, monopolize the microphone, but you've made the federal government uncomfortable on a couple of occasions with some of the stands that you've taken. Is that a question? That's a statement. <laughs> okay. And has yep. that not factored into your, um, it, the possibility that this might not be here? Uh, last time I checked, uh, Canada is a free and democratic country uh, that allows independent civil society organizations to have a voice and write a program and give awards to who it's going to give it to, and so that's what we're going to continue to do. We've got an independent international board of directors, and of course, like I said, there may, you know we agree on 99% of the things, but we are not an agent of the government of Canada. Uh, we are an independent organization. Um, you know me. You know where I'm from. Uh, I, you know, have opinions. My board has opinions. Um, our participants have opinions, and <clears throat> the the point that ha can't be lost, Murray, is the exact fundamental reason why we gather. Canada and the United States don't always agree. France and the United States don't always agree. France and Turkey don't always, always agree. And yet we come together, we talk about things, and we move forward. Because certainly, you know, you put me in a level of importance, which you exaggerate, <clears throat> but certainly my goals and Canada's goals of strengthening strategic cooperation among democracies are exactly in line. Thank you, Murray. We have time for just a couple more. Rob or Steve? I could do this all day, Robin. <laughs> well, if that's it, uh, thank you all very much, and thank you for coming to the forum. All right. Thank you very much, and welcome. And uh, we hope to uh, have some newsmakers for you so you have a busy weekend. Thank you, guys.